everyone. Paula Aponte here with EXP Realty, and I am bringing you today a little information to help you with your financial wealth, so stay tuned. All right. Hi, Nick. Thanks for uh, coming in today. You're welcome. All right, um, we are live on Facebook and I just wanted to real quick have you introduce yourself for everyone. Just for sure, me. I'm Nick Toadvine, founder and president of Guardian Wealth Management. I'm a certified financial planner. I've been doing this gosh longer than I'd like to admit now, probably a little over 20 years. Oh so wow, has it been that long? It has. Wow. I've never done anything else. I tell people if I can't do this, I've got to sweep sidewalks or murders <laughs> or something like that. Well, that's I don't awesome. know how to do anything else. <laughs> well, very good. Well, you're definitely my go-to if I have a question regarding finances and what I should do. You know, recently, you know, I made a change going from teaching to real estate and you were the first person I thought of to ask, you know, regarding my retirement and how I should do things moving forward. Um, <clears throat> with everything going on in the world right now, you know, we, people are obviously, finance is definitely at the top of mind and people are a little nervous of what to do. Um, people are looking at their accounts maybe their 401k, seeing some dips. Any advice that you can give or um, insight you can give in regards to that? Right, sure. Well, the first thing is, is, is don't panic, right? I mean, um, there's a lot of things going on in the news and, and you know, if you flip from one channel to the next, of course, they all make it sound like it's, you know, the end of the world is coming or it's the end of the world is here. And, and you have to remember, you know, you have to take all that stuff with a grain of salt because, um, how do they make money? You know, at the end of the day, the news media, uh, they make money, money selling ads. And so how do they get people to watch? They report the things that are the most salacious and, and scary and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so while this situation is very serious, you know, at the same time, um, you have to sort of just take a step back and say, you know, is this something that's going to, you know, permanently affect me? Or is this just something that's, uh, you know, popped up temporarily and is going to pass? And, you know, I think it's the latter, right? So, um, you know, the market, the stock market is, you know, obviously is, is fallen, you know, a great deal. It's bounced back uh, some, um, but in the short term, you know, the market is trying to price a situation into, um, you know, how businesses are going to behave and, and, and perform, you know, over the coming months. And so initially um, it was really scary and the market just you know, went into free fall mode because uh, we had no idea how long this was going to last and what it was going to look like. But then as we started to get more data and say, okay, well, yes, it's serious, but at the same time, there are, you know, a lot of people uh, that are unaffected. There are some that, you know, obviously, you know, are more affected, um, but it will pass through and, it, you know, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? It's not Armageddon. And so now the stock market is trying to look through that to the other side and say, okay, what's, what's it going to look like? when we come out of this, right? So yesterday, the president went on television and said, you know, here's our, our plan to start to open up the economy again, um, because the economy was basically shut down. I mean, we had people right. that, um, you know, barbers, waitress, you know, waiters, uh, hospital, anybody in the hospitality industry, those kinds of things that are just, you know, can't go to work right now. And so they don't have an income. And so in the market, you know, got a little scary. So 401k balances, things like that. Um, you know, decline quite a bit, but you can't panic, you know, in those situations, right? When the market has gone down, uh, at that point, it's, you know, it's too late to panic. Um, usually if you sell, you know, once you're in a panic mode, that's normally the wrong time. And around that time is when things start to stabilize and get a little bit better. And so, and that's really what we saw. We saw things get a little nasty. The government stepped in through the, with the treasury and the federal reserve, and they, you know, are backstopping a lot of the economy. Um, you know, of course, we know about the $1,200 checks that went out or, or direct deposits or what have you. Um, they're also backstopping businesses, you know, with the payroll protection um, loans and things like that. Um, and so they're doing, they've printed $5 trillion, basically, or they've added $5 trillion to their balance sheet um, in order to prop the economy up. And, you know, there's debate on whether that's, you know, good or bad, I think, but I think it's something they had to do. Uh, because we would, things would look differently if, if they didn't do that. Um, but you can take solace in that they're they're committed to this. They're committed to seeing us through to the other side. And so um, the stock market likes that. And so it's bounced, you know, some. 
And so I think, you know, retirement account balances will start to come back and get better. And, you know, ultimately we'll open up the economy again. Um, you know, it's not going to be like flipping a switch like it was to shut it down some, somewhat. Right. It's going to have to be in stages and different areas and things like that. And inevitably there will be some businesses that don't come back in the same fashion, right? I mean, you're going to think twice potentially in the near term about going to a baseball game with 35,000 other people or a football game with 50,000 other people or even to a movie theater or a play and things like that. Um, you know, or to Disney, um, you know, while, you know, Disney's a great company and into a lot of things, you know, are you going to rush right back out to the theme park next month if they open up, you know, with a hundred thousand other people, you may, or you may not, you know, right. and so there, and, and the way we do business is going to change in some fashion. I mean, we're on this zoom call today. And, um, I think a lot of businesses have figured out that, Hey, we may not need as much office space, right? Yes. People can work from home and still be efficient and it's That's cheaper and I don't have to pay yeah. for it you know, this big building or what have you, um, because I can work out, I mean, I can have my employees work from home and, and to be just as productive. So, so there will be some, some uh, changes and things like that, but ultimately, um, you know, we don't want to panic because the economy will continue to move on and we'll continue to move forward. I mean, we went through 2008 time period where we had really a, a financial crisis where the banks were insolvent for lack of a better term and the government stepped in and sort of made them, you know, feasible and and provided liquidity to them and ended up making money you know on the loans and things that they gave to those businesses and you know in some cases we may see that you know with some of the airlines and things like that uh, cruise you know cruise lines those kinds of things that they're going to have to you know sort of help out uh, in order to keep going but um, but at the end of the day the, the main thing to take from all that is really just is not to panic because this you know they say this too shall pass and then you know uh, five years from now we're going to look back on this and say you know, who knows what the market will be then, but and, and most likely it's going to be much higher than it is today. And right. so you'll say, you know, gosh, if I sold and get out now, you know, and then when do I get back in? You know, if I do that, well, I'm going to wait till things are better so I can buy at higher prices. You know, we were talking earlier and we said, you know, if I, if I like to go to Publix and, you know, my Oreos are my favorite snack and, you know, they're buy one, get one free today or they're 30% off you know, will I buy less because it's on sale or, or do I want to stock up and buy more? And so the stock market is the same way when things are down and, you know, if you have extra money and things like that, you want to, you know, buy more, not, uh, not less. Now in the short term, nobody knows what's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month or anything like that. And, and we're not, we will probably go through more pain in the economy as we, you know, triage, you know, business and figure out, okay, this, this industry's had a lot more damage than, than that industry, um, but it will, you know, we'll eventually move on from this and things will get better. So, um, you know, for people that are putting money in their way for their retirement, they want to just keep doing that. Um, I had someone, you know, early on when this just started said, should I stop putting money into my retirement account? And I said, well, you know, has your cash flow changed or something? Are you short, you know, you're short on cash or I mean, maybe you lost a job or what have you. He said, no, no, you know, everything is, you know, it's fine. I said, well, and I wouldn't stop saving for retirement. I keep putting money away. I mean, yeah, sure. things are down now, but again, it's on sale. So um, are people are just afraid to put the money in there because of the fact that it's dropping. Right. It looks right. Like, you know, on exactly. the surface exactly. level, it looks a little scary to put money into something like that. It is. And do I put money in it? Does it just go lower? Right. Yeah. But you know, the system is designed, everything is designed to go up. Right. So it's not going to go to zero or if it does go to zero, it's only going to happen one time. Right. Armageddon and the end of the world only happens once. Right. Uh, we don't have to live through it over and over again. So, right. so if it's, this is not the end of the world, which is probably not, then things will, you know, will start to get better and, you know, we'll move forward again. And I think that, you know, with what we've seen with the Fed and the Treasury, um, they've moved really fast. Back in 2008, it took them months and months to do what they've done in weeks, um, then, you know, this time around. And so I think, you know, and then they keep saying that they're willing to do more if necessary. And I don't know that more will be necessary. I do know, you know, in the news, they've talked about the payroll protection, you know, loan fund is, you know, has maybe been exhausted. Um, I think politically that's, you know, something that will be resolved uh, because no one wants to be the congressman or senator or whatever, you know, that just denied the American people, you know, because they, you know, for some political reasons. So, so I think that will, you know, be resolved in the coming weeks and, um, you know, those folks will you know, get help that need it. Uh, but, but I think people just need to keep doing what they're doing. I mean, keep saving, keep putting money away. 
Um, this more than anything, uh, I think, uh, magnifies the fact that you need to have an emergency fund. You need to have a healthy emergency fund. Um, you know, Warren Buffett, one of the most famous investors of all time and one of the most successful, says when the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. And so I think a lot of times, you know, people live from paycheck to paycheck and, um, you know, we're able, they buy things based on, you know, what are my payments and things like that, but, you know, can I, can I really afford it? Or am I, you know, one month away from, from insolvency and not having, you know, not being able to pay for anything. And so, and it's very unfortunate, especially those that, you know, have lost their, their jobs and things like that through no fault of their own or, or their business or what have you. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, if you have some, some, some rainy day money, um, you know, when this comes, um, you're able to withstand the storm somewhat and not have to, you know, be like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? You know, kind Absolutely. of thing. So, what, so what I is think going, it, what, is go the going rate, what is the going recommendation? Is it about three, to, three months of savings that you should have kind of on yeah, hand? Yeah, we typically say, you know, I'm a certified financial planner and, and, you know, if you go through the textbooks definition and things like that, they'll tell you three to six months. And so, you know, they'll say if you're a, if you're a married couple with two incomes, um, then maybe three months, right? Because the likelihood of both of you losing your income at once is, is probably not highly likely. And hopefully within three months, you know, you could find some kind of a job and, and some sort of income again. It may not be, you know, long-term what you want to do forever, but, you know, it can plug the hole, so to speak. Uh, for a single person or one income family, we typically recommend six months uh, because, you know, if you lose your job and you're a one income family, um, you know, you still got bills to pay and, you know, it might take three or four months to find, you know, gainful employment again, or depending on what's going on in the economy, um, you know, it really, it, it's tough to say, but, you know, money's one of those things, the more the merrier, right? So, right. you know, a goal for most people, if you follow um, or keep up with Dave Ramsey, who a lot of people, you know, track and follow, you know, he'll tell folks that don't have anything uh, or any emergency money, you know, try to get a thousand dollars because, you know, if you're, car breaks down or something like that. Usually that's a number that will, will help take care of it. And you don't have to reach out to credit cards and things like that. Um, but once you've done that, then, you know, he uh, encouraged people to focus on paying down debt and those kinds of things, which, which I, I do as well. But uh, ultimately I think a good goal is three to six months, depending on your, um, you know, your situation. And, um, you know, more than that, if possible, I, you know, my wife and I, um, she'll tell you, I'm really conservative when it comes to that. And I say, you know, I, I really want a year, you know, because <laughs> I don't want to have to use it. Um, and it hurts when you, I, but I've been through that situation in life. I, I worked, um, you know, for a, for a company for about 10 years and got recruited away to uh, work for another company that, you know, it sounded like they were going to, you know, give me the stars and the moon. And um, I worked there for five or six months and they just said, Hey, we're, we're shutting it down. Um, you know, through no fault of anyone, you know, anyone's. Um, but so I didn't have any income for six months. And so, you know, fortunately I had been a saver and, um, you know, was able to continue living and doing the things I wanted to do before, you know, I was able to sort of have income flowing again. And uh, having lived through something like that, uh, it makes you, you know, more aware and, and more vigilant with saying, you know, do bad, you know, bad things happen to good people and um, you just never know. So it's better, better safe than sorry, you know, so to speak when it, when it comes to that. Absolutely. And if somebody is in a situation where they have not yet sort of planned out, you know, now people are going to start maybe thinking, you know, realizing how important it is to have a plan. Right. If they do not have a plan in place, but they would like to have a plan, what are the first steps that you recommend, you know, other than the obvious of put money away? I mean, should right. they contact a financial planner like yourself or what would they do? Right. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the, you know, first thing is, you know, at least get a little bit of an emergency fund, right? I mean, like Dave Ramsey says, at least you know, try to get to a thousand dollars, you know, those kinds of things. And you may have to make sacrifices. The, the number one thing I think that, you know, most successful people that I see is they, they have a budget. Um, a lot of people don't. Um, you would be amazed at the people that come into my office and, you know, we'll talk about, you know, retirement and those kinds of things. And, and, and the, the question that everybody has, they don't pose it this way, but, but it's really, you know, why they come in is, is do I have enough, right? And, and will it last long? Will it last me through my lifetime? You know, what do I need to do to make that happen? And so, you know, one of the things we'll say is, well, okay, you know, we, it's easy to say, you know, you know, what are my assets and things like that? But then I'll ask him, well, what do you need, you know, to live on? What are your expenses? And not everybody knows. I mean, we know our big expenses, right? If we have a mortgage and a car payment, but 
you know, what are you really spending your money on on a day to day basis? Um, so having a budget and, and sort of keeping up with that is, an, is another, you know, sort of number one thing I would encourage. Um, and then, you know, talking to some professional, right? I mean, I, you know, am capable of, you know, probably mechanically doing things to my car and, and making changes and could figure it out. But, you know, it's not worth the hassle and the trouble and, and me screwing it up and then having to, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, I, you know, believe in hiring professionals to do a job. And so, um, you know, look for a financial planner, a financial advisor, someone you're comfortable with, someone you trust that you can just say, hey, here's, here's the situation I'm in. And here are my goals and am I on track, you know, and they'll tell you, yeah, you're on track or no, you need to make some adjustments and things like that. And then it's not a one time thing, you know, you need to keep up with it. Um, it's like having a GPS in your car, you know, you don't just turn it on when you start the trip, you, you keep it on all the way. And so, you know, where to turn left and turn right and those kinds of things. And so working with somebody and communicating with them, you know, on a regular basis, they can help you determine, you know, are you still on track or have you veered off course a little bit or are you ahead of schedule? Maybe you're doing better. Um, than, you know, than you thought, you know, kind of thing. And, and for someone who's maybe trying to start that planning process, do you, like, I know on my, I bank with Chase and right. they have on their app, you know, the graphs that tell you how much is going out, how much is going in. They even categorize it for you. Are there any right. like neat programs out there for people to use that are maybe free that you know of online to help? Yeah, them those are good. Um, those are really good. Um, you know, if your bank provides that, I know um, I bank at uh, Regions, it, it, we have accounts there and, and they do some of that. Uh, some of the credit card companies do it. Uh, a really good website that will help you keep track of a lot of that stuff is mint.com, okay. mint.com, M-I-N-T.com. And uh, you can uh, keep track of all your sort of financial accounts there. We'll keep track of your spending. It's free. You can put in your passwords and your 401k and all that kind of stuff and sort of track it from one place. And there are others as well. Mint's one of the, the probably the larger ones and, and what's been around the longest. Um, so I'd probably recommend that, you know, for people that, that need help or just a plain old simple Excel spreadsheet. Um, you know, it's not exciting, um, but you can set it up however you want. You can download templates from, you know, just Google budget templates and, um, and they'll give them to you. But um, uh, yeah, I think that's really the, a, a, a budget and um, sort of a net worth statement. Those, those two things really can be enlightening and empowering to know like where your money, where you're spending your money, how much is coming in, how much is going out. And, you know, I've sat down with people that were paying bills, you know, they just, you know, one was coming out of one account and I had these two ladies that I worked with that they had two different television services they were paying for, like one, you know, for cable and for some, something else. And, and, and I asked him why, and he said, oh, I didn't realize we were still paying for that. One was coming out of the other account, but it was just on autopilot, you know, and they didn't know um, oh until God. they went through the numbers, you know, and I said, well, there's a hundred dollars a month that, you know, we found in the couch cushion, you know, so, nice. Nice. You know, so, so there's things like that. And, you know, how many subscriptions things do we sign up for that are five and $10 that seem nominal, but, you know, that adds up over time, you know, as well. So, so. so are, when you're sitting down with your clients, are you actually going through some of these things and asking these questions and finding we do. little we, loopholes. We do. Yeah. We ask them to go through and I tell them, you know, we want to know what your expenses are, you know, you need, and we want you to go through that. And more than one month, you know, you can't just say, well, it was this last month. What is it, you know, on average, you know, every month and, you know, you need to know what your bills are and, um, and they're going to change over time and things pop up and, you know, there's all kinds of, um, you know, stuff that happens in life. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you can say, well, most months, this is what I've got coming in. And, you know, this is what's going out. You know, is there a surplus or a deficit, right? Hopefully there's a surplus. There should be a surplus, right? Um, and the whole goal and, and to get wealthy over time is just to live beneath your means, right? Um, yeah. We in this country tend to um, want to keep up with our neighbors and things like that. And so, you know, we make a little more money, so we spend a little more money. We make a little, <laughs> so we spend a little bit more. But if you can sort of get in the mindset of um, you know, just sort of living beneath your means, it's amazing, you know, how much you can start to accumulate over time and, and save. You know, I have I always tell the story. I've got a couple of different clients. One's a highly paid um, professional uh, type person with you know many advanced degrees and things like that, and the other one you know is more of a blue collar type you know person uh, that makes you know maybe twenty percent of what the other person makes. However, uh, the one that uh, has the huge income 
is barely able to pay their expenses and barely able to pay. And we're one is one month away from devastation. The other person saves almost half of their paycheck, you know, every month. And if had to walk, if, if they had to walk away from work tomorrow, they can do it and, and it'd be fine. You know, wow. kind of. So it's not what you make, it's what you keep at the end of the day. Yes. You know, my dad used to always say, I like to watch the money grow in my pocket. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. People say, you know, there's, I heard a guy one time, he's like, you know, there's uh, people like to collect things and collect this. And he's like, I like to collect dollars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, Nick, thank you so much for all of this information. If somebody wanted to reach out to you directly, is there a way that they um, should do that? Is there a website or? Sure. Well, certainly. I mean, they can just me they message me, you know, through the link here on Facebook. Or our website is guardwealth.net, and it's just www.guardwealth.net, uh, and you can get to us through there. All our contact information is there, but message me through Facebook. That's fine, too. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, thank you so very much for meeting with me and giving all this um, great information. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye.